It was the dawn of the third age of mankind, ten years after the earth minbari War. The Babylon Project was a dream given form. Its goal, to prevent another war by creating a place where humans and aliens could work out their differences peacefully. It's a port of call, home away from home for diplomats, hustlers, entrepreneurs, and wanderers. Humans and aliens wrapped in 2,500,000 tons of spinning metal, all alone in the night. It can be a dangerous place, but it's our last best hope for peace. This is the story of the last of the Babylon stations. The year is 2258. The name of the place is Babylon 5. Howdy all, this is Joel Hooker 11, and you're watching another episode of the Joel Hooker 11 show. So, after I did my fan fiction episode, I really wanted to do a sci-fi episode. Um, I'm a nerd by heart. I love Star Trek. I love Stargate. I love... I even loved Andromeda. Until Kevin Sorbo became the executive writer, the only writer... You can really tell when that happened because it really kind of went downhill. But I love everything to do with sci-fi. I really love it. I enjoyed Starship Troopers, not to the extent that other people have. But sci-fi for me is a way to really not only look at today's issues in a fantasy setting and not feel like you're getting preached to, but it's a way to really delve into who we are as people. Look into these different uh, situations and whatnot and go, what makes something all right and what doesn't? Is it the circumstances? Is it the person involved? What makes the person tick type of thing? And not only that, but I also love how it's influenced the society in general. So, I was, but enough of that, I was then thinking of, well, maybe I should do it on my favorite show, or my favorite shows. However, that has changed. You might have seen the intro, which if you've gotten this far, you've seen the intro, and you've seen the Babylon 5 logo, and you're like, oh, okay, well, this is going to be about Babylon 5. Well, not so much. I'm passing along the sad news of Michael O'Hare and Turan Bay's deaths. These were two monumental actors. Michael O'Hare is famous in the Babylon 5 universe as Jeffrey Sinclair, the first season commander of Babylon 5 and the commander for the movie in the beginning. No, well, not in the beginning, but the gathering. Sorry about that. And he does make it in, in the beginning for a very quick uh, scene of him flying around in his uh, Star Fury. But Turhan Bay appears in one episode as a ranger, but he is more famous for his role as Emperor Turhan, this Antari Emperor. And both these actors were amazingly good actors. It's really sad that they died. They died within three days of each other. Michael O'Hare died on the 27th of September after being in a coma for a couple days after a heart attack. And Turhan Bay died after a long, drawn-out battle with Parkinson's disease. And the thing is, the real lamentable thing is that they never got any there was no buzz about it that they died I do not follow Twitter <clears throat> I don't have a Twitter account or anything I don't have any of those other tweeting websites or whatnot supposedly it made a tiny bit of a dent in there but it was a tiny bit Facebook nothing there is I did not hear a single thing on Facebook from any of my friends my 300 or so friends, not a single one of them, went, oh yeah, just to let you guys know, Michael Hare died. No, you didn't. 
it didn't get on any of the major news sources. There wasn't even articles on them. The only way that I found out was because I decided I was going to look for some Babylon 5 fan art, which is it's a pitiful amount that they have out there. It's pitiful, the fan material out there. There isn't hardly any. But that's not to... That's... I digress from what I'm trying to say. I digest. And the thing of it is that real life has been hard on the Babylon 5 alumni. It hasn't been nearly as hard on the Star Trek one or the Stargate cast or any of the other sci-fi shows. Those people have had pretty good in life. Not all of them have had it that well. But for the most part, almost everybody is still alive from the Star Trek cast, except for Dick Forrest Kelly, which is kind of sad. But with Babylon 5, not only have you had Michael O'Hare and Turhan Bay die, but you've also had Jeff Conway, who played security guard Zach Allen, you who died in 2011. You have Andres Katsoulis that passed away. And he had, had emotional problems. He didn't like being out of the costume because he thought he looked ugly. But he did. He was an excellent actor. Probably one of the best actors I've ever been. I really admire Andreas Katsoulis. But Richard Biggs, who played Stephen Franklin, Babylon 5's doctor, he was an amazing actor. He was. He was great. And he died. Jeff Conway. Battle drug addiction. Well, not drug addictions, but alcoholism. He was always battling that type of stuff. And the only one that. The only one on the entire cast that really has done all that well is Bruce Boxleitner. But even he's gone through a divorce. He. Real life has just been tough on these guys. Really tough. And the thing is that, that hardly anything happens. There is no buzz about them. If Michael Straczynski was to up and die, the show's creator, what would they say? they talk about his comic books. They they might make maybe a single reference to, oh yeah, he's been... He also did Babylon 5. That'd be, that would be it. I mean... Even when Major Barrett died, who played Turhan's uh, third wife in Babylon 5 and was also Gene Roddenberry's uh, wife in real life. And not that much was uh, talked about the fact she died. Sure, it made, a, it made a bit more buzz, but the thing is that real life has been hard on these guys. And it's really sad that they have to die... But you know what? That's the way of things. I don't lament the fact that they did die. In some cases, it was a release from this life and the struggles of it. But really, I and all is said and done, we're gonna miss you, Michael Hare and Turin Bay, and we will see you beyond the rim. Anyways, like subscribe to the show make comments really there, there's been no comments whatsoever on my show if you have any comments whatsoever that I can improve on please uh, do so because I'd really like to improve this show well anyways uh, I shall see you next time so commander after all you've just gone through, I have to ask you the same question a lot of people back home are asking about space these days. Is it worth it? Should we just pull back, forget the whole thing is a bad idea, and take care of our own problems at home? No. We have to stay here. And there's a simple reason why. Ask ten different scientists about the environment, population control, genetics, and you'll get ten different answers. But there's one thing every scientist on the planet agrees on. Whether it happens in a hundred years, or a thousand years, or a million years, eventually our sun will grow cold and go out. When that happens, 
It won't just take us. It'll take Marilyn Monroe, and Lao Tzu, and Einstein, and Moro Buto, and Buddy Holly, and Aristophanes. All of this. All of this was for nothing. Unless we go to the stars. Your Majesty, you asked to see me? Captain, may I ask you a question? Depends on the question, I guess. Why are you here? In this place? In that uniform? Was it your choice, or were you pressed into service? It was my choice. The planetary draft didn't start until the war, a few years later. I guess I wanted to serve something that was bigger than I was. Make a difference somewhere, somehow. You seem interested in why people chose to be here. It has occurred to me recently that I have never chosen anything. I was born into a role that had been prepared for me. I did everything I was asked to do because it never occurred to me to choose otherwise. And now, at the end of my life, I wonder what might have been. That's why my father taught me to live each second as though it were the last moment of my life. He said, if you love, Love without reservation. If you fight, fight without fear. He called it the way of the warrior. No regrets, then? A few, but just a few. You? Oh, enough to fill a lifetime. So much has been lost. So much forgotten. So much pain. So much blood. And for what? I wonder. The past tempts us. The present confuses us, and the future frightens us. And our lives slip away, moment by moment, lost in that vast, terrible in-between. But there is still time to seize that one last, fragile moment. To choose something better. To make a difference, as you say. And I intend to do just that.